We are in the garden of Yad Vashem, overlooking Jerusalem, a place that memorializes what happened during the Second World War. Nothing can do justice, of course, to the memory of those that fell in those days, but there is a tremendous effort that is being done in Yad Vashem to retain the memories. There are over 4 million people, 4,200,000 names that have already been recorded in Yad Vashem. And it is my great honor to be sitting next to Chief Rabbi Israel Meir Lau, the most important rabbinic personality in Israel and outside of Israel as well. Our friendship goes back to many years, and Rabbi Lau, who is right now the Chief Rabbi of Tel Aviv Yafo, is the chairman of the board of this institution of Yad Vashem. Rabbi Lau, it's a great pleasure Thank to you. see you here today. Welcome. And I, and I know that you are a great proponent of understanding between the different faiths, the different religions, and Jerusalem is very important for all religions in the world, the monotheistic religions. When the Pope John Paul II, let his memory be blessed, came to visit us on March 2000, I offered him a Bible. In the Bible, I wrote a dedication, quoting a sentence from the prophets, from the Bible. We had a prophet, Mika. Mika wrote the sentence, every nation has to follow his faith, his religion, to be loyal to it. We, the Jewish people, have our Lord Almighty, Eloke Israel, the God of the people of Israel. We do respect the rights of every religion in every place in the holy sites here in Israel. You can see the churches, all kinds of churches, the mosques, they are preserved. If once happens a, a damage to one of them, we bring the man to the court, we punish him, we put him in jail, in whatever. But you see the flourishment of all the religions here. And we expect the same approach all over the world where the Jews are spread, as you know better than me, in the whole globe. Can't we do something more about peace in the world? We can do much more, and I thank you for the question. Because the politicians, the statesmen, didn't bring the peace so far. The religious leaders didn't use the whole power they have in and behind themselves. They didn't try. They didn't challenge the possibilities they have. The millions, even billions of people who believe in all kinds of, the, of religions. And the leaders don't use it for the case of peace. I remember I that one year we even traveled together to Cuba. He had a lot to say to Fidel Castro, and he was very pleased with the meeting with you because you are not only a great Jewish leader, I think you reach the hearts of those who are not Jews as well because you have a great heart that is open not only to the Jewish people but to humanity at large. You remember that trip we did together? You brought me to Havana, to Cuba. It was on February 1994, which is exactly 19 years ago, yeah. exactly. And we spent two days in Havana, the Jewish community, and around. We saw the problems, and we had the honor to be invited to Comandante Fidel Castro to his office and we spent there over three hours from 10 o'clock p.m. till 1 o'clock a.m. It was a beautiful talk. He's very smart, very intelligent. He's anti-antisemitism. Anti. Anti-antisemitism. Uh -huh. anti Anti-antisemitism. Anti anti he didn't enable an antisemitic a event in Cuba, at least in those 39, 40 years that he ruled over the island. Well, Rabbi Lau just shows what great influence religious leaders can have, but not every religious leader. You're a very special religious leader. Uh, Harav Brenner, I can appreciate what you have done in Caracas, in Venezuela particularly, in Latin America in general, this itself, that in those times you could bring a chief rabbi from Israel 
to meet with Fidel Castro in Cuba to come in and to go out safety shows how powerful you are. Rabbi Lau, thank you, you very, very much. much. We really appreciate thank your you. time. I'm happy that you are here with us in Yerushalayim. Thank you. In Yad Vashem. Thank you.